Hi and welcome to a, another installment of the Village Market Simulator series. This is Will Ruddick and I thought instead of a digital simulation we would do a tabletop one. I've got some old D&D characters here and some dice and uh, this is going to represent a housing cooperative. So the dwarves here are the village elders and they have created a cooperative with with other farmers and these dice here this is a 12-sided dice it represents 12 different goods and services offered by the housing cooperative so if you buy these you can get a subscription you can buy them in advance you could pay your rent with them for example okay we're working with some cooperatives here in the US so I thought this would be a, a nice example rather than our, our typical communities in Kenya where our headquarters is and there's other kinds of cooperatives. There's educational cooperatives. These guys, these vouchers might represent their tuition. So you could buy those in order to pay for your school tuition. There's a food cooperative that might represent getting a community supported agriculture basket um, or food at the food co-op. Okay. You've got an environmental co-op selling sustainable timber and doing tree planting. You've got an energy co-op doing um, microgrids and providing energy. So these would represent kilowatt hours that you can purchase and pay for electricity. There's a health co-op. So this could be doulas and all kinds of different healthcare workers. Um, and then finally, you've got a waste and recycling co-op. So you can use these to have your waste collected and recycled. So all of these are typical vouchers that you might have um, in your life, or maybe you don't, but you might have vouchers for CVS or Knob Hill or Safeway or loyalty points, which are essentially credit obligations. These are There's a liability of the issuer to redeem these for some service that the business offers. Okay. And what's, what's sort of missing here is the ability for these guys to easily trade with each other. So in Kenya, for instance, we've got many, many community groups all selling different services amongst each other, trading with each, with each other, but how do they trade amongst each other? Okay. And the same goes for all kinds of businesses across the US and the world that have some kind of voucher. So what we're going to do is create what we call a pool cooperative. In this case, it's going to be based on representatives from all of these different cooperatives are part of this pool cooperative. And each one of these cooperatives is going to put let's say $4,000. Let's say each one of these represents $1,000 of their services. And note that we're using the US dollar as the unit of account for simplicity here. It doesn't have to be, but it's an easy place to start. So the fooding, food cooperative puts in $4,000 of their vouchers. The environmental cooperative puts $4,000 in. The energy cooperative puts $4,000 of their vouchers in. The health cooperative does the same. Uh, the waste recycling cooperative puts theirs in and the housing cooperative also puts theirs in. And what this pool cooperative is going to do, its job as, as managing this pool is to make sure that it remains balanced and allow people like, let's say, John here. So John is going to go work for the housing cooperative. Here he goes. He is going to uh, receive some housing cooperative vouchers, right? So he brings those back to and he can use those later to pay for his rent, okay? Okay, another option would be that he could put them, anybody could put it, these vouchers into this pool, okay? And he could pull out whatever he needs. And let's say he needs some food at the food co-op. So he pulls out some food co-op vouchers and he uses them over here, okay? That could all be done um, with software without any uh, hardship on John. And John got what he needed. Um, in that moment. So he was holding ho housing co-op vouchers, which he didn't need. He used them for some food. Okay. And at the same time, the pool co-op could be charging small fees on using the pool. So some of these vouchers go to the, the pool cooperative. And what that does is, is it also helps them manage risk. Okay. Because these guys, there's a dragon and some, uh, rats there. They might decide that it's time to take off and the food cooperative collapses. Okay, so there was some risk, something happened at the food cooperative. It's no longer functional. All these vouchers are no longer usable. So these vouchers of theirs that are in the pool are no longer redeemable for the service. So there's a risk there. If someone from the, the food cooperative then had some of these and tries to put them in the pool, right? Let's say they try to put three in and they try to remove three from the energy cooperative over there and use them, 
Well, now our pool has become imbalanced. It's overexposed to the risk of the pool cooperative, the pool, the, the, the food cooperative. So the pool cooperative needs to step in. And so they can use some of this to put back into the pool to offset the, the risk of these guys. They can also limit the number of vouchers from any of these groups that can go in the pool. Right. So generally we could say, let's say $10,000 worth of housing co-op vouchers is the max that can ever go into that pool, right. In order to balance out the rest of the pool. Okay. So this is a, an example where you have many unique different vouchers or credit obligations or loyalty points being used in a style of a currency, but there's no actual currency here. We have a unit of account, but we don't have a single currency. This is just a pool in which anything going in, right, one-to-one -one can, can receive anything in the pool. Okay, you could have different exchange rates in there, but this can be a, quite a simple type of an instrument. So that's what I wanted to describe today. Thank you very much. Bye.